and sanitation in the intervention villages. With over $12 million invested in the project, the need for sustaining this life-changing initiative to serve generations dominated the speeches at the launch. As is always a, a requirement, the communities will have to, to a certain extent, take care of this well for themselves. Because as the Alcalo or the chief was saying, this well does not belong to the German government after it completed. Or it does not belong to Charles Horn, or to the director, or to Dr. Cooper. It belongs to this community or all the communities where the wells are dug. So it is the responsibility of the communities to take care of them. It is theirs. And one way to take care of them is to, to begin to put aside some money for its maintenance and for its sustainability. Similar appeals were made by al Fuseni Jaju and Bakari Dembo Baji, the chiefs of Fony Bintang and Fony Bondali respectively, whose communities are beneficiaries. The two were unanimous in commending Child Fund Gambia for choosing their respective communities to benefit from the project before assuring to adopt proper standards for the sustainability of the project. Anita Martin from the German Embassy, whose Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development shouldered the bulk of the funding, spoke on the importance of access to clean water. This intervention, she said, is part of her government's commitment to help provide clean water to people who need it most. This grant from the German government is in recognition of the basic human need to access clean drinking water. The government of Germany has prioritized the development of basic fa facilities such as this project to ensure population's accessibility to clean water. Dr. Wanna Cooper, Program Director, Child Fund Deutschland, joined the chorus of voices in pleading with the beneficiaries to ensure the sustainability of the wells after the completion of the project. The two-year project was finally launched by the Deputy Governor of West Coast Region, Patu Sanya, in a statement she read on behalf of the Governor. Well, after the successful launching of the project, these people hope to be back in two years' time to celebrate the completion of the project. Momores Jala, GRTS. National Assembly members have converged on the Baobab Holiday Resort for a two-day meeting convened to sensitize them on the performance of the Gambia Emergency Agricultural Production Project, GIP. Officials of Anti-Hunger Project and their partners, as Farmer of Fofana reports, targeted the lawmakers in view of their advocacy and decision-making roles, especially in the context of agricultural development. Almost two years after reaching out to Gambian farmers in the form of hundreds of farm machinery and other inputs like fertilizer and seeds, the Gambia Emergency Agricultural Production Project, GIP, is now meeting with the people's representatives to share with them how a project born out of the 2008 food crisis has performed. Seth Tijan Sose, the man coordinating the 5.3 million euro intervention, told National Assembly members that GIP, which is funded by the EU with the World Bank as a credit, was designed as an emergency project to strengthen the food production and productivity capacities of farmers. There was an interagency assessment which comprised of the World Bank, the EU, FAO, Ministry of Agriculture, NGOs, and other key stakeholders. They conducted a rapid assessment of the situation to determine the effect and the magnitude of the food crisis in 2008. And as a result of that assessment, nine districts were identified in the country as the most vulnerable to the food crisis then. Agnes Gillard, EU says the affair to the Gambia in her statement, reaffirmed the European Union's commitment to working with the Gambia in attaining the Millennium Development Goals, especially in the area of food security. Despite the challenges encountered along the way, she said the positive impacts realized by the GIP cannot be measured. To improve sustainability, of the agricultural capacity of the country, inputs for one single harvest are obviously not enough. That is why 667 farmers group were also provided with machinery equipment, such as power tillers, to improve sustainably their labor productivity. In addition to that, the project team worked hard on the rehabilitation of 23 post harvest storage facilities and on the rehabilitation of three seed multiplication facilities in Sapu, Charmaine and Jeroba. 
As representatives of people, including farmers, an official of World Bank, Banjul Office, Badara Juf, reminded National Assembly members of the important role they could play in the advancement of a sector he described as the lifeline of the Gambian economy. You as the representatives of the people, you have a big stake in, in this. It is to ensure that the, the, the projects are well targeted and they reach the beneficiaries and the beneficiaries benefit for the sake of full self-sufficiency and full security. That is important. That is for me, that is the role of the National Assembly. One, to make sure that there is enough appropriation in the budget for agriculture because it's the lifeline of this country. Two, to ensure that the beneficiaries whom you represent at the level of the National Assembly have benefited from these I mean, projects, and projects are well targeted. The involvement of National Assembly members in this two-day forum, according to the Permanent Secretary, Minister of, Minister of Agriculture, shows the importance the Gambia government attaches to agriculture and food self-sufficiency in particular. We cannot address food self-sufficiency in the absence of agricultural mechanization. By addressing food self-sufficiency, you have to provide input to the farmers. The outcome of this interface convened by the Gambia Emergency Agricultural Production Project shortly before it winds down is expected to help government, donors, and the project team in the appraisal of future interventions. Farmer of Fofana, GRCS. Well, over 100 newly promoted naval personnel have been decorated with insignias that commensurate with their new ranks. The ceremony was held at the naval headquarters and presided over by Commodore Madani Senghor. Babukar Kamara has more on that. He is back on a merit-based promotion pioneered by the Commander-in-Chief President Jami, following the recent decorations of 426 military personnel at the Defense Headquarter Camp barely one week ago. This year promotion two, uh, 2012 is a stroke that breaks the camel's back, and it is important to note here that none of those recommended for promotion have been disapproved. The recent promotion constituted 118 naval officials of non-commissable ranks ranging from ordinary able and leading seamen, petty to chief petty officers and fleet petty officers. These new promotions, according to the Naval High Command, is first of its kind, building on a strong initiative by President Jame to reward deserving naval officials. The promotions of 118 non-commissioned officers in the Gambia Navy is a result of a directive given by the Chief of Defense Staff to look at deserving ratings of the Gambia Navy that deserve to be promoted as a form of motivation. My office convened a board, a promotion board, comprising of your unit commanders and your commanding officers. They sat and deliberated upon who should be promoted and who should not be promoted based on the directives that were given in the convening order. That is, promotion is no longer based on the length of service, but it is based on merit. To whom much is given, much is expected. We are all aware of the challenges that lie ahead of us and the high expectations of the command. It is a moment of gratification that also their fitness to amass the various ranks conferred to them by their high command in anticipation of continued loyalty and dedication to their new functions. These are all efforts geared towards transforming the dreams of the gallant seamen. Babukar Kamara. GRTS. Very nice. Well, the Republican National Guard also had its fair share of the promotions for 170 of its personnel have also been elevated to various ranks. Louis Mendy reports the key message at the ceremony was for the promoted men and women under arms to live up to expectations.